All right, uh, Microsoft Quick Pascal. This is not their uh, ISO Pascal version. This is a, a product aimed at uh, competing with uh, Borland's Turbo Pascal. Uh, I did a video before on this, but uh, I've had a chance to play around with it, and uh, I have some more information. So let's just do uh, a demo first before I lose you all. You like uh, pretty pictures, so. So this is the graphics demo that comes with Quick Pascal. It demonstrates some of the uh, functions you can do in the library. There's a nice little bug or butterfly. And uh, we can adjust the window. And once we adjust the window, we can run the same things again, but in a smaller area of the screen. This just shows you, you could create graphics in different resolutions, but uh, as long as you set the uh, the window to the right size, uh, all your graphics, you won't have to redo basically. Not always technically true with uh, things like video games, but uh, for some business applications, you could probably get away with it. Anyway, so that's the demo that came with uh, Quick Pascal. And uh, Quick Pascal was released in 89. And that's uh, just a little bit after Turbo Pascal 5 was released in 88. So let me just uh, run the demo that came with uh, Turbo Pascal 5. So this is Borland's uh, graphics demo. So remember, if you've been uh, using uh, Borland's compiler, you're used to seeing this. And so we got a little flying saucer there, I believe. And some charts for business people. And all kinds of other things. So there we go. Much more extensive fonts. Now, it's not that the uh, Quick Pascal didn't have these features. It's just they didn't put them in the uh, demo. So if you were accustomed to using uh, Turbo Pascal and you looked at this, uh, you'd get the impression that it was inferior, actually. But uh, let's just take a look. So this is Turbo Pascal released in 88. Uh, no mouse support in the editor. Um, and uh, it has menus, drop-down menus, um, single window though. Um, and let's take a look at uh, Quick Pascal. So just a little bit after, let's quit this. And we can see it has not only uh, windows, but overlapping, resizable, and and mouse support. And this is just a bit after the initial uh, Borland release of Turbo Pascal 5. And uh, it's a much better editor um, or compiler. So it has almost all the same features in terms of um, graphics and uh, basic text uh, commands. And uh, I don't see much difference in terms of speed. Everything seems to be running at comparable speed. The EXE files are actually a little bigger with the uh, Microsoft uh, Quick Pascal, but uh, everything else seems pretty equal. Now, in the area that uh, Turbo Pascal is better, uh, let's just start with the um, the graphics library. Uh, since uh, Microsoft has released this after, it's their job basically to be more compatible with uh, Borland than you know themselves basically, and they they didn't do a good job. They they included uh, a graph unit that was supposed to be compatible with uh, Borland's uh, graph unit, but it wasn't. It's uh, the test I've done the init graph, the uh, the out text and several other commands just don't behave uh, the same way. So if we, you were to use that, it wouldn't work as well. Uh, also, the uh, BGI drivers, basically, 
they did nothing with that. It it was you know it wasn't something that I guess they wanted to uh, be compatible with because it was a Borland thing. But if you're trying to take over the market of an existing product, you should be trying to support as many features as possible. So I think that's one of the uh, the failures there that they didn't support the uh, the BGI. Uh, it wasn't a love thing with the uh, BGI with most people because it was slow, but it allowed you to create drivers or purchase drivers that worked out with super VGA cards. And so give you additional uh, hardware support that's not available in the uh, Quick Pascal. Um, the other thing is that uh, they just stopped for some reason. They, they released this uh, version only. There was nothing that uh, came after this. Uh, Borland, on the other hand, uh, came back with uh, version 6 and version 7 with uh, their Turbo Vision uh, text windowing library. Uh, so whatever was used in the editor, you could create your own programs using similar functionality. So this is Turbo Pascal 7, but the same uh, Turbo Vision was also included with uh, Turbo Pascal 6, which was released just a bit after uh, Quick Pascal. So I don't know what happened there, but it seems like you know, Microsoft just didn't want to follow up with uh, updating their quick pascal maybe it didn't sell well but there is some good stuff in quick pascal the graph unit even though it's not compatible with the uh borland graph unit uh is i think superior in uh just the uh the basic screen mode so it handles cga ega and vga modes much better i think uh it seems a little bit snappier and uh, it supports two modes. Let me just uh, load up something to demonstrate. Um, Got to get used to the uh, how things work around here. Uh, we have to set a main file. And then we can uh, rebuild. Okay, now we can go. So Quick Pascal supports uh, a 320 by 200 by 16 uh, resolution. Borland, for some reason, never supported this resolution. Uh, maybe they thought it was uh, too limiting for business applications, so they never supported it. And they also didn't support the uh, 320 by 200, 256 color resolution, which was used often for games. Now later, uh, other vendors uh, created uh, BGI drivers that supported these modes, but initially, and, and for a long time, these modes were not supported natively, or it didn't come with the compiler. So, you know, one for Microsoft. Um, the other thing that I found uh, that works equally well in Quick Pascal is the uh, bin object uh, utility that comes with Turbo Pascal. I've used it with Quick Pascal and it works in the same way. So let's let's just run this. So this is the uh, utility that comes with uh, Turbo Pascal, Turbo C. It basically allows you to convert any binary file to object and link it to your program. It's mainly used to link the uh, the font files and the BGI drivers, but it doesn't stop you from using it for, with other kinds of uh, binary files. And I've used it for graphic files and all, all kinds of things, and it, it works just very well. And it also works with the uh, Quick Pascal. So, you know, another bonus for uh, Quick Pascal. And what I found just uh, recently um, is that I was testing NASM with uh, Free Pascal, and I also tested it with Turbo Pascal, and it was working fine. But I forgot to test it with uh, Quick Pascal, and it turns out, let me just switch to that folder. If I could somehow remember the uh, folder name. Okay. Just 
just give me a sec and I'll remember. Yeah, there we go. And I have, yep, it's in my path. Uh, all right, let's open up. Um, so I did a few demos, uh, not a few demos, just one demo with a few functions, uh, testing out NASM with free Pascal. And uh, I'm learning assembler. And uh, an hour ago, I thought I'd uh, test it with quick Pascal just to see if it would work. And uh, let me just load it up so we can all see it together. Here we go. Let's see if we can make this build. All right, so it uh, it seems to have built. Let's uh, go. And uh, yeah, if you could take a look at uh, right here, these are the right results. Um, so let me just uh, change one of them. Uh, so it's supposed to add 10. Uh, let's do the uh, change the first. Uh, let's change this to 20 so the the end two will become 30 so let's uh rebuild again and so if we check here n2 equals 30 so it's working basically it's uh let me load up the additional unit so this is the uh unit that links the uh, assembler code. And let me open up the assembler code. Um, and here we go. So all this uh, works just as well with quick Pascal as it does with turbo Pascal. So I was kind of surprised that everything kind of just worked. So I'm going to be keep uh, trying new things with quick Pascal, but so far I'm actually impressed. Uh, I, I'm a little bit uh, surprised that it didn't get much more attention when it was released because so far it seems like a, a pretty good compiler. So that's all I have uh, for today. Um, thanks for watching.